Chapters 6 through 8 of the Gospel of John from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Leeson. The Gospel of John from the World English Bible. Chapters 6 through 8. Chapter 6. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Sea of Tiberias. A great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs which he did on those who were sick. Jesus went up into the mountain, and he sat there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Jesus therefore, lifting up his eyes, and seeing that a great multitude was coming to him, said to Philip, where are we to buy bread that these may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may receive a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in that place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. Jesus took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to those who were sitting down, likewise also of the fish as much as they desired. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, Gather up the broken pieces which are left over, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up, and filled twelve baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. When therefore the people saw the sign which Jesus did, they said, This is truly the prophet who comes into the world. Jesus therefore, perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force, to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, and they entered into the boat, and were going over the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not come to them. The sea was tossed by a great wind blowing. When therefore they had rowed about twenty-five or thirty stadia, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing near to the boat, and they were afraid. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. And they were willing therefore to receive him into the boat. Immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. On the next day the multitude that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one in which his disciples had embarked, and that Jesus hadn't entered with his disciples into the boat, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, boats from Tiberias came near to the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the multitude therefore saw that Jesus wasn't there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats, and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Most certainly I tell you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Don't work for the food which perishes, but for the food which remains to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you for God the Father has sealed him. They said therefore to him, What must we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. They said therefore to him, What then do you do for a sign that we may see and believe you? What work do you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus therefore said to them, Most certainly I tell you, it wasn't Moses who gave you the bread out of heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. They said therefore to him, Lord, always give us this bread. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not be hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me, and yet you don't believe. All those who the Father gives me will come to me. 
Him who comes to me I will in no way throw out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of my Father who sent me, that of all he has given to me I should lose nothing, but should raise him up at the last day. This is the will of the one who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews therefore murmured concerning him, because he said, I am the bread which came down out of heaven. They said, Isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How then does he say, I have come down out of heaven? Therefore Jesus answered them, Don't murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Therefore, every one who hears from the Father and has learned comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most certainly I tell you, he who believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down out of heaven, that any one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Yes, the bread which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews therefore contended with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus therefore said to them, Most certainly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you don't have life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as our fathers ate the manna and died, he who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at this, said to them, Does this cause you to stumble? Then what if you would see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who don't believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who didn't believe and who it was who would betray him. He said, For this cause have I said to you that no one can come to me unless it is given to him by my Father. At this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Jesus said therefore to the twelve, You don't also want to go away, do you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Didn't I choose you, the twelve? And one of you is a devil? Now he spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Chapter 7 After these things Jesus was walking in Galilee, for he wouldn't walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the feast of the Jews, the feast of booths, was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here, and go into Judea that your disciples also may see your works which you do. For no one does anything in secret, and himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, reveal yourself to the world. For even his brothers didn't believe in him. Jesus therefore said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world can't hate you, but it hates me, because I testify about it, that its works are evil. You go up to the feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, because my time is not yet fulfilled. 
Having said these things to them, he stayed in Galilee. 011:021 But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but as it were in secret. 011:022 The Jews therefore sought him at the feast, and said, "Where is he?" There was much murmuring among the multitudes concerning him. 011:023 Some said, "He is a good man." Others said, "Not so, but he leads the multitude astray." Yet no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. 011:024 But when it was now the midst of the feast, Jesus went up to the temple and taught. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, "How does this man know letters, having never been educated?" 011:025 Jesus therefore answered them, "My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone desires to do his will, he will know about the teaching, whether it is from God or if I am speaking from myself." He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Didn't Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keeps the law? Why do you seek to kill me? The multitude answered, "You have a demon. Who seeks to kill you?" Jesus answered them, "I did one work, and you all marvel because of it." Moses has given you circumcision, not that it is of Moses, but of the fathers, and on the Sabbath you circumcise a boy. If a boy receives circumcision on the Sabbath, that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely healthy on the Sabbath? Don't judge according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Therefore, some of them of Jerusalem said, "Isn't this he whom they seek to kill?" Behold, he speaks openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the rulers indeed know that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man comes from, but when the Christ comes, no one will know where he comes from. Jesus therefore cried out in the temple, teaching and saying, "You both know me and know where I am from. I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you don't know." I know him because I am from him and he sent me. They sought therefore to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. But of the multitude many believed in him. They said, "When the Christ comes, he won't do more signs than those which this man has done, will he?" The Pharisees heard the multitude murmuring these things concerning him, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Then Jesus said, "I will be with you a little while longer, then I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and won't find me, and where I am, you can't come." The Jews therefore said among themselves, "Where will this man go that we won't find him? Will he go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this word that he said, 'You will seek me and won't find me, and where I am, you can't come'?" Now on the last and greatest day of the feast Jesus stood and cried out, "If any one is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from within him will flow rivers of living water." But he said this about the Spirit, which those believing in him were to receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus wasn't yet glorified. Many of the multitude therefore when they heard these words said this is truly the prophet others said this is the Christ but some said what does the Christ come out of Galilee hasn't the scripture said that the Christ comes of the seed of David and from Bethlehem the village where David was so there arose a division in the multitude because of him some of them would have arrested him but no one laid hands on him The officers therefore came to the chief priests and Pharisees and they said to them, "Why didn't you bring him?" The officers answered, "No man ever spoke like this man." The Pharisees therefore answered them, "You aren't also led astray, are you? Have any of the rulers believed in him or of the Pharisees? But this multitude that doesn't know the law is accursed." Nicodemus, he who came to him by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man unless it first hears from him personally and knows what he does? They answered him, "Are you also from Galilee? Search and see that no prophet has arisen out of Galilee." Every one went to his own house. Chapter eight. 
But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now very early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. He sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman taken in adultery. Having set her in the midst, they told him, Teacher, we found this woman in adultery, in the very act. Now in our law Moses commanded us to stone such. What then do you say about her? They said this, testing him, that they might have something to accuse him of. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he looked up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone at her. Again he stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. They, when they heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning from the oldest even to the last. Jesus was left alone with the woman where she was in the middle. Jesus, standing up, saw her and said, Woman, where are your accusers? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way. From now on, sin no more. Again, therefore, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You testify about yourself. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered them, Even if I testify about myself, my testimony is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you don't know where I came from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone but I am with the Father who sent me. It's also written in your law that the testimony of two people is valid. I am one who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. They said therefore to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. Jesus spoke these words in the treasury as he taught in the temple. Yet no one arrested him, because his hour had not yet come. Jesus said therefore again to them, I am going away, and you will seek me, and you will die in your sins. Where I go, you can't come. The Jews therefore said, Will he kill himself, that he says, Where I am going, you can't come? He said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore to you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. They said therefore to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning, I have many things to speak and to judge concerning you. However, he who sent me is true, and the things which I heard from him, these I say to the world. They didn't understand that he spoke to them about the Father. Jesus therefore said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I say these things. He who sent me is with me. The Father hasn't left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he spoke these things, many believed in him. Jesus therefore said to the Jews who had believed him, If you remain in my word, then you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's seed and had never been in bondage to anyone. How do you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most certainly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is the bondservant of sin. A bondservant doesn't live in the house forever, a son remains forever. If therefore the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's seed, yet you seek to kill me, because my word finds no place in you. I say the things which I have seen with my father, and you also do the things which you have seen with your father. They answered, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. 
But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham didn't do this. You do the works of your father. They said to him, We are not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, God. Therefore Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came out and have come from God. For I haven't come of myself, but he sent me. Why don't you understand my speech? Because you can't hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and doesn't stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks on his own, for he is a liar and its father. But because I tell you the truth, you don't believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this cause you don't hear, because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered him, Don't we say well that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I don't have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. But I don't seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most certainly I tell you, if a person keeps my word, he will never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and the prophets, and you say, If a man keeps my word, he will never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? The prophets died. What do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say that he is our God. You have not known him, but I know him. If I said, I don't know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I know him, and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it, and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, most certainly I tell you, before Abraham came into existence, I am. Therefore they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus was hidden and went out of the temple, having gone through the midst of them, and so passed by. End of chapters 6 through 8